This work presents an approach to predict frequency stability margins for a loss of line contingency. My name is Fabian Uriarte and I will guide you through the rest of this video. Here is a problem overview. Consider the 5 megawatt microgrid in Nome, Alaska which is powered from a single diesel unit. The town is considering adding 2 to 5 megawatts of geothermal power to reduce fuel costs. While geothermal power is steady all year, there is uncertainty in the reliability of the line. This uncertainty leads to several questions, such as, how fast should an energy storage unit respond under a loss of line contingency? How much inertia should be maintained at the generator bus to prevent fast frequency droops? Or what is the maximum amount of power that can be lost or stepped at once? And here is a potential energy storage unit. We define frequency stability as the ability to maintain acceptable frequency following a disturbance. This means that the frequency must remain bounded by a percentage of nominal value. From this definition, an important question is how fast must one respond to a sudden event to prevent frequency from falling out of bounds? We define frequency stability as being bounded by 5%. If this condition is met at all times despite contingencies, we say the frequency is stable. After some derivations, we can arrive at this expression. This expression predicts the time there is to respond to a loss of power contingency, yet keeping the frequency bounded. The 60 converts units of seconds to cycles. The 0.05 is the maximum frequency deviation. S-rated is the volt ampere capacity tied to the generator bus. P-step is the amount of power stepped at once onto the generator due to a contingency. H is the aggregate inertia constant at the generator bus. Here is the generator lineup at Nome. Yellow bars highlight volt ampere ratings. Green bars highlight rotor kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is highly desirable to sustain frequency under disturbances. However, as seen, these machines do not store very much of it. Therefore, we can consider supplementing this energy storage with an external unit to support frequency regulation. But the question remains, how fast must remedial action kick in or respond to remain frequency stable? We developed a way to predict this. We developed a way to predict this. Following are two cases to validate such prediction. In scenario one, the city is consuming four and a half megawatts. The wind farm is producing one megawatt. Two megawatts are being imported from the geothermal plant. As noted, only one diesel generator is online to save fuel. This scenario represents a situation of minimal spinning reserve. Before showing the time prediction, let's also introduce scenario two. In scenario two, the city is drawing five and a half megawatts. The wind farm is down to half a megawatt. 2 megawatts are still being imported from the geothermal site. However, the diesel unit was changed to a larger machine. This scenario is representative of a typical winter day. Both scenarios 1 and 2 model the situation of losing the geothermal tie line at once. Here are the response time predictions for both scenarios. We used the equation in slide 5 to produce this chart. The x-axis represents the diesel generator's rotor kinetic energy. The y-axis represents the power lost at once or power stepped onto the generator rotor due to a contingency. The red traces represent the critical time the remedial action has to respond in order to maintain frequency. The underlying assumption here is that the sum of remedial power plus the spinning reserve exceeds the power stepped on at once. Let's take a look at scenario one. Using the calculations shown, the predictions suggest that an energy storage unit must respond in 3.1 cycles to maintain frequency. This is true if using Gen 14, which only has 0.23 kilowatt hours of kinetic energy. Let's look at scenario two. The predictions show that Gen 12 can withstand the contingency for 17 cycles at which time the energy storage unit should become effective. This is ample time compared to scenario one, and it is a result of running a machine with a lot more kinetic energy. There is a substantial difference between the two results. 
that essentially buys one time to activate the energy storage unit such as a flywheel battery. Although energy storage units respond fast, having more time to respond reduces technology requirements and the probability of instability. Just like these two examples, a prediction can be made for any other machine size and for any level of sudden power loss. We run a simulation to validate these predictions. Here are the results for scenario one. The top chart shows the generator bus voltage. We see the tie line is lost at 10.1 seconds. The generator bus voltage drops due to the power stepped onto the generator. Chart two shows the power demand as seen by the diesel machine in green. It increases due to the sudden loss of power. One can see that the governor, shown in red, does not respond immediately. According to the simulation, it takes the governor three cycles to respond. Chart three shows the power imbalance in green. At 10.1 seconds, the imbalance is nearly negative to megawatts. This means there is more demand than supply and hence frequency decays. The same chart shows in red the energy storage becoming effective 3.1 cycles after the contingency. The bottom chart shows the frequency deviation. As noticed, the frequency remains bounded by 5% and the system remains stable. In reality, an energy storage unit would respond a lot faster, but the idea here is to validate the critical response times predicted with slide 12. As before, the top chart shows the generator bus voltage dropping due to the increase of load exerted onto the generator. The second chart shows in green the electrical power demand as seen by the diesel generator. As before, the red trace shows the governor takes about three cycles to respond. Chart three shows in red the energy storage becoming effective 17 cycles as predicted. The green trace shows the power imbalance experienced by the rotor. The power imbalance or accelerating power dictates the direction of the frequency change. The bottom chart shows that the frequency remains bounded by 5% despite the 17 cycle wait time. Waiting 17 cycles is an exaggeration. However, the exercise here is to predict how long a generator can withstand the contingency and validate the predictions of slide 12. A method that shows how long a generator can sustain a frequency on its own was presented. The method shows predictions in terms of frequency stability margins. The equation was validated using two simulation scenarios. The underlying assumption, however, was that the energy storage output power plus the spinning reserve must exceed the sudden power change. If the sudden step in power can be met, the generator can be stopped from decelerating and the frequency can be restored. If the sudden step in power can be met, the generator rotor can be stopped from decelerating and the frequency can be maintained. If there is more power reserved than is changed at once, the rotor can be stopped from decelerating and also re-accelerated back to 60 Hz. This work also answered several questions surrounding frequency regulation, such as how fast should the energy storage respond, how much inertia should be tied to the generator bus, and what power levels can be lost all of a sudden. We certainly owe this work to our sponsors at the University of Alaska Fairbanks and the several minds behind this work. Without them, this work would not have been possible. Thank you for watching the Center for Electromechanics at the University of Texas at Austin.